All right, we're back playing some Clubhouse Randoms. I, I massaged my ego in chess, so, and we're gonna we're gonna play some Clubhouse Random games just to see. I don't even know, you know, who's playing this game besides me and my viewers right now. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna start with some blackjack. Not the strongest game in the in the Clubhouse pack, but I do know how it's played at the very least. We're going up against three Animal Crossing stands. I guess I'm kind of an Animal Crossing stand based on my based on my avatar as well, so I can't really flex. <laughs> All right. Dealer must draw to 16 and stand on 17. I don't know. Is my camera covering... Uh, it might cover my cards a little bit. Let's see. Let's see after Cameron's in control. To just give it a moment. Doom. Who's, who the heck is playing blackjack in Clubhouse games? There's probably like 10,000 free better blackjack games on the, on the internet. Okay, yeah, I'm going to move my myself just slightly. You know, oh, that's the exact opposite. That actually startled me when I moved that. Okay, move me up here. There you go. That's where we that's where we deserve to be. And we got to make sure we got to make a tactical bet here. And the tactical bet we will make is all in. We have a 7 and an 8. Uh, essentially could not be worse. That's terrible. Truly awful. Um, the theory on this one is probably stand. Um, but the reality of the situation is you gotta double down. Double down. Alright, we have busted. That's how it's gotta go. They had an 18, we would have lost anyway. You gotta accept sometimes in, in blackjack, we would have lost anyway. Alright, we're at minus 100. Come on, what? you don't need to take 20 minutes to come up with your bets in this mode. Then we double down again, yeah, because if you, if, you, if you double minus 200, I was going to say you get the positive 400, but that's not the way it works. <laughs> you, you don't multiply it by itself. And even if you did, it wouldn't go to positive 400. It would go to a positive uh, 4,000. But, oh, oh, this is a great double. 16. <laughs> Can we split on this? Can we split and then double? There's no split. All right, well, you got to double down. Double down. All right, we busted. That's because they took our 7 earlier. Come on, bust, bust. Oh, son of a. All right, this one's not looking so good. This one, yeah, 40,000, that's right, not even 4,000. Yeah, I wouldn't consider myself a math geek. You basically, the only way to win in this version of Blackjack is you have to uh, double down. If you don't double down and some other people double down, then you lose. Because it, it's a it's a, only a five-hand game. <laughs> so you, I mean, I don't know if that's actually technically true. You know, it's probably not the way you play it. But it's, it's the most fun way to play it from a game theory perspective. Okay, this time we got a seven and a two. That's not, that's not a bad uh, double down right there. Double down. Okay, it is if you get 12. It's not a great start. Come on, Nathan. This is, this is ridiculous. So you, you got a bust. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a dang disaster, man. I think is this the last no, it's round four or five. Negative 500. I don't even, I don't, I don't think we can even get to, if we got blackjacks, we might be able to get our, uh, we might be able to get back to zero. These chips are 10k each, dude. Son of a. 17. I mean, at this point, you absolutely have to double. The only way to not finish in the negative is to is to double. Double down. Twenty-two. All right. 
It is what it is. <laughs> lady luck. They call her lady luck. Alex really hit two blackjacks. It's a skill-based video game. I mean, here's the thing. Blackjack, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it skill-based. There is strategy. Um, but, uh, you know, in a, in a five-hand game where the person with the highest money after five hands wins, it's not really the best way to play blackjack. <laughs> Isn't that the way? The poker works like that too, right? Like, poker is... Uh, is like they play five hands of Texas Hold'em. Can you imagine if that was what the World Series of Poker was like? Blackjack. Yes! I don't even have to play! <laughs> Let's go. Oh, tough luck, Nathan. I don't get to double down, though. So I only win 100 or something. Maybe. I guess I, I probably win like 250 because Blackjack is worth the... Uh, stand. Stand. Blackjack's worth a little extra, I think. Ooh, tough luck, baby! Do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Play pays three to two, you're absolutely right. I will say though, like like Blackjack is like one of the most fun casino games. Cause it's just executing a flowchart, right? It's it's a little less variable, or at least a little less random, and a little bit more like just trying to do the optimal thing at all times. You you see what you get, you consult the chart. If the chart says uh, you, you're doing the right thing, then you do it. Otherwise, you you deviate. What will you play? Who knows? All right, next game, please. Searching for players. Flowcharts are fun. Absolutely. If stream is live, then pog. Else, don't pog. What are we, nobody's queuing for anything? Come on. Come on. It's dealer's choice. Is Tomo in here? Yeah, he's, he's just chilling. Oh, okay. That's beautiful. The cats are being uh, annoying, so they get wet food. Tomo! What the heck is Kanisha? <laughs> Kanisha is our... She's our current guide. She teaches us about the games around the world. Oh, there we go. What the, uh, dude, I'm just going to be honest with you. I have never played battle tanks in my in my entire life. Sure, battle tanks. Let's do it. Is there a tutorial for this one? <laughs> the, the music is pretty nice. Okay. I understand. What the heck? Oh my god, it was just it's so aggressive. Get lobbed. And get grabbed. Nope. I was trying to I was trying to stutter step him. I was trying to stutter step. I will say to me it seems like perhaps there's a little bit of a there's score effects in this game. I just crashed into the wall and died. Uh, it bounced off the back, huh? Uh, this is easily one of the worst games in this whole pack. I mean, this is this is kind of comical. This this is actually worse than toy baseball, also known as spawn camping. The game. Play again with this group. I no. May God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> we gotta uninstall, man. Okay, let's play some random. Toy baseball is pogged. I, I, battle tanks is a little. I mean, I feel like once. Oh my god, no, no, I would no. Come on, come on, Alex, you're ruining my random, Alex. Alex, just no life queuing for for blackjack over and over. 
I actually turned off the freaking console because I was so so annoyed. <laughs> All right, I guess we won't be queuing for random because one degenerate gambler can can ruin it for everybody else. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna play? Let's put some stuff in the queue here, okay? I like, um... I mean, we, we do have some Joy-Con drift. I, I kind of like toy curling. Like, toy curling's a fun time. Malf, of course, is an incredible bowler. Oh, dude, Billiards is like, that's a top-tier game. That's a top-tier game. And a, a Yacht Dice. Yacht Dice is incredible. Don't worry about the baby. The baby, the baby cries. It, it's how it goes down. You know, it, it happens from time to time. We playing some toy curling against Tons. That being said, <laughs> I will at least uh, do you the service of closing that up. All right. I was watching a little curling this weekend. It just happened to be on at like eight in the morning because it's a Highly uh, enjoyable spectator sport. I don't know if it's what it was one of those big curling tournaments. It was like the the Scotties Tournament of Hearts or something like that. I'm still waiting for like the. I'm still waiting for a good digital curling game. I think curling's pretty sick. It's basically like a high octane shuffleboard. The only. Uh, curling game I've ever played in my entire life. There was a Nagano 1998 Olympics video game that used uh, it, it had curling as one of the mini games, which and it was a ton of fun. Wow, that was probably the worst shot in curling history. You know what? <laughs> it's also inspirational, like how how they they broom so well. You know what I mean? I'm not much of a broomer, so I don't. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I mean I gotta think about this one, right? Like this one's a it's a bit of a conundrum. Well, it, it's gonna make their next shot a little tricky. See, last I think three. we got last three. Okay, I think we got a chance here. I think we got a chance here. I think you got to smash it. No, I was hoping to bounce off of that one, hit the other one, and end up dead center. Anyway, I dude, where's I'm just asking for where my curling games are. Last two. Like where where's my curling games? Oh, last one. Last one. Okay, this is this is we got to get it right in the center. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. We might lose the round, but it's not that bad. Look at the number of stones just littering the field. Let's go! I thought it was like a, a best of three or something like that. We can make it a best of three. I mean, that was fast. I'm telling you, man. A cur Like a free-to-play curling game where you could buy your own brooms and change your voice in the game. They go, hard! Hunt! I hit! Stop! Stop! Jenny, stop! Jenny! Jenny! Jenny, go! Jenny, go! Sorry. Sorry. Um. Anyway, if you haven't watched curling, that's what it's like. Let's see what we got here. Golf's fun, but it's only it's only a three-parter. I'm still I'm I'm an eight-ball man. Hit and blow is fun. I just don't think they do a great job of the uh, of the. Uh, two-player aspect of it, honestly. I gotta be honest, I, you know, I like dominoes. Not everybody's into dominoes. I, I like dominoes. I'm a dominoes guy. I'll, I'll put some Richie Mahjong on there. It's been a bit. No, I'm, I'm saving my, my arcade golf for when uh, Mario Golf comes out. I mean, I'm probably going to become like a no-life Mario Golf streamer. 
I'm gonna play the single player career. I'm gonna defeat Genius. I'm gonna have. I don't care about having like a 400 yard drive. I'm just gonna have. I'm gonna have that kind of spin where when you chip it onto the green, it overshoots the hole and you go F, 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 ruined. And then it goes. And it gets like blue sparks start to shoot out of the back of it and it goes. And it shoots into the hole. And they're gonna be like double bogey. All right, Karim. All right, Simone. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Illegal golf ball. Will it be better than Sonic Olympics? It can't be worse. Son Sonic Olympics is a is a disaster. The games in it are fine, which is the most annoying part. It's literally just a, it's like a management misstep with the UI and the loading screens and the et cetera's and the et cetera's. Okay, I mean, this is, we're, we're playing against a real Karam genius. Like, that was, that was a, a disastrous break for me. And this is like playing a closed game in chess. You know, they decided, like, like who, who plays a game like this? And they go, oh, you know what? Like, I don't want to bust it open to begin with. Like, I can't even imagine how you would, how you would find yourself in that kind of position. Like, it's not the world championships. Get over yourself. Just, just break it open. This isn't what I want to do. I would like to place again. Thank you. <laughs> Forgot it. How, how do you aim? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, L and R. That's right. That's right. I mean, I was literally doing it. I just <laughs> forgot a second later. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shot. But it's still early. Still early in the world of Karam. Now, this is a tricky shot. The, this We call this the backbreaker. Doesn't always work, but when it does, you're feeling pretty good. You know why? Because not only did we get the backbreaker, now we got a free shot right here as well. Thanks to the aiming line resin. It hurts. It hurts. This is a game where someone could definitely run the table. Hmm. Not all someone's though. Okay, you know what? Forget that. We we can get that in the future. Let's take this opportunity to do a little bust up. Mm. I don't mind it. They're, they're gonna get some shots, but I think that was a good long term move for us. Every time I see the name Simone, have you ever seen that movie uh, S Simone starring Al Pacino? It's also known as Sim 1 because Al Pacino creates a, a VTuber. It's basically he creates the first VTuber. It's a celebrity who is not real, but he falls in love with her. It's, it, it's it, you know, it's not a great film, I wouldn't say, but no, look it up. It, it's a real movie. It came out 12 years before her. It came out in like 2001. It's probably, I haven't seen her, but it, I'm pretty sure it's a much worse movie than her. I've seen it like five times on the movie channel in the summer vacation between 8th grade and ninth grade. This'll go. This'll go. Ooh! Queen pocketed. You've seen that five times, but you haven't seen her once? Yeah, because, I, you know, in eighth grade, I, uh, you know, her wasn't out. If her had been on the movie channel in the year 2002, I probably would have watched that ten times. Pull back to shoot. Oh, come on! You're not going to give me that? Judge? Oh, sorry, Tomo. I didn't mean to startle you. 
I don't watch a lot of movies in, in the modern era. Watch some YouTube videos. I, honestly, like, I, ambiently, I think I watched, like, five episodes of Kitchen Nightmares yesterday. I, re I didn't see any of them all the way through, but I, like, put on the YouTube playlist of, of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares and just filtered in and out of the living room from my office into the kitchen, living room, feed the baby, my office, you know. Excuse me, why is this queen still on the board? You see Amy's Baking Company? I, I have not, actually. It, it's, a, it's a tendency towards the UK episodes. I'm familiar with the virality of Amy's Baking Company, though. Um, and I, I've, I, there were some clips. Like, you know I've been telling you? That Gordon Ramsay's, whoever handles his YouTube channel, is actually, like, a, an unbelievable, like, Zoomer meme genius. Um... They uploaded a video called, and literally this is on Gordon Ramsay's official YouTube channel. The video is just called Memes Not to Watch at 3 a.m. And it's just a collection of the most cursed moments from Kitchen Nightmares. It's it's actually like Chib does the marketing for, for <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's YouTube channel. It's so good. And I watched that one. It has it has many moments from uh from Amy's baking company. Such as when uh the owner admits that he takes his staff tips because he also has to do the occasional, uh, he has to take the occasional order. And then, uh, Amy calling her server a little, a little B word because, uh, the server dared to question her. Some 90 day fiance energy there. They who oppose the queen shall die. Hmm, not even close, not even close. <laughs> the video before that one is called Moments That Butter My Egg Roll. It is! I watched that one too! I, I'm telling you. And what's great is that it's all the same content. Like, it's like they only own the rights to like 20 episodes of Kitchen Nightmares. They just keep cutting up the same moments over and over and over. And I watch them every time. And I'm like, oh, this is the one where, like, they have a grilled Caesar salad and they just throw the whole head of lettuce onto the grill. This is the one where, like, um... Well, he says, if that's beef, I was born in Bangladesh. This is the this is the one where he liked the food at, at Mama Sherry's Soul Shack. But then, uh, you know, after the, uh... After the episode came out, she went corporate and, like, ruined the food by because she got too popular. Like, they, there's some great episodes. I, you know what one I watched last night? I watched Chicken and Banana was on last night. I was like, oh, this is a great episode. They're, they're like, what did the guy serve you? It was chicken stuffed with banana and asparagus. Chicken and banana?! There's also, there's some weird stuff in that one. I love that they always shoehorn, because it's reality TV, they always shoehorn, like, some kind of other activity in, as if it's team building. So for this guy, they had him, like, uh, they had him do some bullfighting. Like, they <laughs> put him in a, in a ring, and then, like, gave him a red jacket, and, like, had him try to tame a bull or something like that and then Ramsey was like do you get it and he's like yeah you made your point and I'm like what what point was that I don't know it's a great show though kitchen nightmares is really good I, I hotel hell is is good too I like hotel hell um what I don't like is is restaurant impossible that guy he's like fake Gordon Ramsay My eyes aren't working. My eyes aren't working. Bar rescue. Oh. I think I think bar rescue is is okay. It's I don't really like John Taffer uh like at all. Um but I think the show is kind of fun. Uh I know Jay, Jay are you here? Yesterday, you were like, John, Taff John Taffer's the man. And I was like, you know, if you're into it, you're into it. But he's he's so aggressive. Oh. But, um, 
Bar Rescue is okay, except for the fact that the only place that it airs is on the Paramount Network. And instead, an episode should be half an hour long, but they actually stretch it out, literally, not a joke, to two hours. Because they play four minutes of commercials for their other shows in between. Um, but I guess the Paramount Network is also, like, reworking itself now to, like, offer some original shows. We might have still lost this one, by the way. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Mystery Diners? Mystery Diners, I, I, it was a guilty pleasure for a while. Mystery Diners was a show where, um, it's completely fake. But the whole premise of the show is that, like, the owner of a restaurant will go on it and be like, you know, I'm just queuing for pool, man. See you in eight ball. Um, good game, good game. Mystery Diners, the, the owner would be like, I think my staff is screwing me. And then they would, uh, put, like, have hidden cameras and they'd be like, look at this. They're stealing money from the till. And then, yeah, they'd release the drone, and the like. The drone would come in there, and be, you'd see all sorts of. There was there was fist fighting on the show all the time. It was it was just play acting, but it was uh, it was fun. I just played this guy. <laughs> how how was he, Toby? How was he? I'm with you as well, Cobalt. Like, mm. UK Kitchen Nightmares is great. I actually, you know, US Kitchen Nightmares, I think is is fine it's obviously way more dramatized but just part part of the reason i i actually still kind of like it is because of the fact that some of the american restaurateurs are just like so up their own butts about everything like i forgot how good this song was as well but it, the other thing is like in um really I kind of felt in, um, in, in Kitchen Nightmares UK, Gordon Ramsay is like kind of acerbic, you know, he's like cynical, um, and, and a little rude, but, uh, he, he genuinely like wants to help, and then, uh, in Kitchen Nightmares US, I feel like he, he, he aims to wound, like the show is much more about how he's an asshole than like, how he's an asshole who also wants to, like, help out. Although on some of the UK ones, he, do he does go a little hard. I don't know if this will go in, but... Oh, it, it definitely went in. Oh, baby. Yeah, he's always molding. In the UK version, he takes his shirt off all the time. Like, I thought that would, it, it's, it's 12 years too late, but that would be, like, a great sketch. Is like, Gordon Ramsay, uh, like, walks into your restaurant, and he's like, Oh my god, it's so bad. He's, oh, I have the, I'll have the lamb shank. And then he takes his shirt, he's unbuttoning his shirt, and he's like, I've just ordered the lamb shank, and fuck me, it's not here yet. And they're like, dude, we're in the dining room, you can't be taking your shirt off all the time. He's it. He's changing his shirt between every course. The service tonight is to... He's like, come on, man. You got, a, you got someone in your dining room with no shirt on. You donkey. It's you, Gordon. I do. Have you seen the U.S. episode at, at uh, I think it's called Nino's Restaurant? Where there's this, this bald... Uh, guy that runs the restaurant who is just like he's lost and he, he's getting in like these confrontations with gordon and he goes like you know he's like i'm not one to trifle with so if you want to like mess with me then you better know what kind of guy you're messing with and he's like are you threatening me and then he's like i don't like to use words like that and it's just like it it's it's just embarrassing he, 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 his brother does go, Hello, my name's Nino. Anyway. Yeah, he shows Gordon Ramsay pictures of him cleaning. And everyone's like, why do you have pictures of yourself cleaning? Like, if it was clean, you wouldn't need pictures proving that you cleaned the place. Like, it's... <laughs> he clearly, like, staged the photo of, uh, of him cleaning the bottles and stuff like that. It's so weird, man. And then he's like... 
Don't listen to these guys. My brother just doesn't trust me because I'm in a recovery program. And you're like, hey, dude, come on. Like, you're, you're trying to save the business here. I didn't realize you're getting embroiled in all this, in all this family drama. Ah, oh, frig. We're, I'm trash at pool, huh? You ever tried? <laughs> you ever tried cleaning? It's way faster to just take a photo. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's a cursed game. There's one where the father uses his son's inheritance to open a restaurant. How does that? How does a father use a son's inheritance? I'm not doubting you. I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't know. The inheritance that would have gone to the son. Oh, like from a grandparent or something. Okay. Oh my god! That is true. Like, it's constant. Um, they, one of the recurring themes on the show is like, it was always my dad's dream to open a restaurant, so like we've opened one and it's losing a bunch of money and also like I'm 24 years old and I work as the head of household and they're the, the front of house and I make no uh, salary whatsoever. And you're like, oh, okay, well, this seems pretty bad. This seems like a fairly toxic situation. I know we talked about it like before, like I think it was even yesterday, but like... Just a, it's a, it's amazing to me how many people who have no history in food have a lifelong ambition of opening a restaurant. Like, I don't have a, I don't have a desire to open a, a restaurant. I, you know, I like eating in restaurants. You know, not so much since COVID, obviously. What a shot. But like, I recognize like I, ha I have no skills in that department. I think I, to be honest with you, I think I would be a pretty good waiter. I can remember things that people order, and I, I've got a little banter ability. But also, I know that sometimes you want, sometimes you got to step in there and be like, you "Let me regale you with a story." And sometimes you got to be like, "These people want to be left alone," and you just you just hang out and you get ready for like a, you get ready for someone to finish their drink and then look around a little bit and then you go, "Sir, could I get you another IPA?" And they go, "You know what? I will have one." And then you already had that ship poured. You take it out in three seconds. Sometimes I really want to be alone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's not gonna go in. I have no confidence. Bro, my freak, it's the greatest shot of all time. Your feet will hurt? Nah, I'll just wear Vibram's uh, five finger shoes. They're the, they're the wave of the future. That's gonna go in. Told you. <laughs> anyway. I just don't understand why so many people like want to run a restaurant. It, it, I guess it's just because it's a business that everybody has familiarity with, right? I guess it's kind of like being like a screenwriter or something. People are like, I like movies, so I I could I think I could write a movie. Or a streamer? Well, that's different. We have no we have no moat. Oh, son of a. <laughs> Whether you think you could or could not become a streamer, you're already right. Let's put it that way. Toby's, I do hate the way they phrase it. Toby is in control. I, I have no ambition to run a restaurant. Maybe like, I, I, I don't even want to be in the food business. But definitely like the, the plan to financial freedom when I was, you know, people would talk about when I was like 14. is like, if you can just get enough money to open one Subway franchise, you're in the clear. 
nowadays. Like, I think Subway's taking a bit of a PR hit. You gotta be kidding me. Who t- What's the oil pattern like? <laughs> I can't believe that didn't go in. My, t- my co-workers talked about franchising a sandwich chain like two weeks ago. I'm telling you. And then it moved on to Starbucks. But actually, Starbucks has had some diminishing returns, I guess, in Canada as well. They closed like, like 400 locations in Canada this year. And they didn't tell anybody what they want, what they were going to close because they didn't want people to get mad. Okay, that last part is conjecture, but that's the way I thought about it, at least. Um, we, won, we won again. Very cursed games of both Karam and, uh, and Pool, but we made it out. Oh, Starbucks doesn't even do franchises. I didn't know. I, I guess they're all corporate owned. Do, 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 do. I don't want to play toy baseball, man. I can't. I can't play toy baseball. Come on, yeah, yeah. Hit me up in a yacht dice game. Oh, I gotta hit the A button. My mistake. That's true. You know, like, in, oh, hello, Nathan. This guy looks like someone who's good at yacht dice. <laughs> There, there are some, or at least there were some comical uh, locations in Vancouver where they would have a Starbucks on facing corners of a block. So you would literally be like, hey, what do you want to, do you want to go to the Starbucks that's like, you know, on the corner of Ash Street and West 4th? Or do you want to go to the one that's on the corner of Ash Street and West 4th? You know? So it's not, it's not really a big surprise. That uh, maybe they've oversaturated a little bit. There we go. How about that? So remember when I couldn't move my face cam, man? Those were the days. And by the days, I mean bad, bad days. <laughs> keep, keep, keep. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. That's fine. You gotta go for the Yahtzee. Come on, come on, come on. That's still really good. I mean, that's like an amazing four of a kind, but the 35 bonus is so strong. I always give it there. I always give it there. Yeah, we were only one off. Remember when you had face cam, but then didn't, and now you have it again? It's true. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I think this is like vulnerable, but also real. I think having face cam on actually is like negative 20 pounds for my life like i think i don't even if i like shame spiral and i start to habitually snack um i i never let it go to an absurd degree because i'm always like ah, i gotta be on i gotta be on face cam that's pretty good three four five six we'll, we'll keep that and we just try to roll a two Try to roll a two. That's fine. That's fine. And then re-roll again. Or a seven. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sick. All right. That didn't roll. I would like to go again. Even like... And then getting this new camera. Like... Uh, I, I've already mentioned, like, it makes me want to shave more. Like, I probably won't shave before the stream tomorrow, but definitely, like, this weekend, I'm doing a whole all-over trim. And then also, like, sometimes at night, like, you know, you get older, your skin goes through, like, weird stuff, you know? It gets dry, it gets oily, you know, depending on what kind of responsibility you got. So I got, like, a, I got a cleanser, I got, like, a toner, and I got a moisturizer. Sometimes I'm a little lazy, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't want to put on the toner and the moisturizer. And then I'm like, ah, but I'm going to be on camera. I probably should. So I I do. I did not. Yeah, okay, hold on. I think we're going to hold. We're going to hold fives for now. That's not a terrible roll. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold fives. And if it goes wrong, then, then so be it. 
It's totally okay. But, you know, we, we need a lot of strife to stop us from getting this bonus. It's not likely to happen. Lucky. Oh, he's got he's got the open ended though. <laughs> he's got the open ended straight draw. Son of a! All right, it's, you know if it's gonna be like that, then it's gonna be like that. Well done. One, one, three, three, four. We're going heavy threes on this. I, I don't get a full house by doing that. The full house gets me. What is this nonsense? We're, we're going to do game theory and go for a lower risk play. If we end up with two twos, life goes on. If we end up with two twos, we got no problems. Three twos, of course, is better. We're feeling good there. Hey, will you open the tables back up? I need to make what I lost for believing in Twitch Rivals. Dude, nothing... I, mean, I wasn't tilted, but I just thought it, it, it demonstrated... And I'm, there's no salt here. But I think it demonstrated the the difference in groups in, in Rivals. That when I saw Voiboy's tweet, and he was like, A great day at Twitch Rivals, had a lot of fun. We went 8-1. and one. And I was like, you went 8-1? and one? You showed up to the finals looking like, you know, an NHL player's rookie photo, like from the draft. We went, we showed up being four, four wins, four losses and a draw. We've been hit in the freaking face. We'd had teeth, teeth knocked out of us. It was crazy. So in the end, like we did great in Twitch Rivals, but yes, we did. We didn't get to pay out the bet that we won more than we lost because we did, we did lose more than we won. By one game. Um, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm actually going to just take the full house here. My strategy, a, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush here. Yeah, don't don't run them. <laughs> don't run the bets. I hate it. <laughs> I prefer when they're off. I'm not going to. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you don't want to watch this stream because we're not betting and like bets are happening elsewhere, then you know that's fine. I, you're the you're the customer. You have your your choice. It's the free market of ideas. I mean, I gotta be honest. This is a really good choice. It's a really good Yahtzee uh, opportunity. It's a really good four of a kind opportunity. This is looking pretty solid. Please. Yeah. <laughs> He's the greatest yacht dice player of all time. But yeah, I I I wasn't joking. I got a I've got a history of losing prize money at the hands of like Wunderkind League of Legends pros. First it was Box Box, then it was Yasuo, then it was Voiboy. Boy. I will say though, at least with like with with uh Box Box and uh, and Yasuo, I never actually like played them. Like they didn't eliminate me. I got eliminated at the hands of people who then got eliminated by them. Voy Boy just took my he he ripped the Mind Stone out of my uh, right out of my forehead. This is a this is a d dangerous one. Um, you know what? We're going to try ones here, I think. You know? <laughs> Can live with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to the... You know, you're, you're going to laugh again. Four of a kind is really hard to roll. I'm just going to take that. Um, I am looking forward to the WandaVision, uh, the season finale tomorrow. Series finale? I don't know. Like, um... But what's funny is that, like, when it happened yesterday, or last Friday, I should say, I actually thought that was the finale. And if you know how that one ended, I was like, what? They're gonna make us wait, like, a year 
to figure out like what happens after this. I was like that is I was I wasn't mad, but I was like, wow, they really frigged up the ending there. <laughs> and then I I realized they had one more uh, week left, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I think the the show has gotten a lot better as time has gone on. I I always understood what they were going for, but I just like genuinely. By, by the third episode or something of, of the gimmick, I was like, ah, eh, you know, I'm kind of, like, over this. I... What happened? Literally, like, controller batteries double tapping. I fat fingered it, basically. You know what? Let's just pretend we were being the heel. <laughs> no! All right. Baby, we got a game going. I'm not sweating it though, like it's still, it's tight, okay? I still have my choice. He has to roll a four of a kind and a full house, which are things that are hard to roll. We can keep a four. We have choice threes, fours, and large straight. Large straight, we're probably gonna zero. I think we're just gonna, honestly, we're just gonna take a big choice on this one. I'm trying to think, could we go fours? That would leave us on 49. If we got no I, I think we I think we re-roll everything and look for the fours. I don't think we worry about making a super choice. I think we try to get fours. And now I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, that would give us eight, which would give us fifty-three. We would need to overshoot threes by one, which is not a good play, so we're gonna take our choice at twenty-one. I'm not worried about um, about the four of a kind full house. Like those are very low scores, but he's got to beat him. And right now he's got zero. He's got sixes, four of a kind of full house. Like he's on the freaking, he's on the ropes right now. Like what are you gonna do with this one? You're, you're gonna put up a four of a kind that, best case scenario, is gonna be about as good as mine. Worst case scenario, you're about to zero it. My all, I'm not going to say we're guaranteed to win, but we're up by seven and we have an easier path. Now, this is not what you want to see. This is this is a full reroll. Nate Silver BTFO. What the heck? Um, so I honestly would have preferred if that had stayed a four, but so be it. I'm going to zero out the large straight. The odds of getting the large straight are, are very low. The threes and fours are what it's all about here. He needs sixes and four of a kind. Both, both of those looking pretty good for me right now, I would say. All right. And he needs three sixes. Minimum. So we take fours. No matter what, we pretty much gotta roll with this. One more four would help out an awful lot. If, if we don't get it, we don't get it though. We, Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Strike to claim it, strike to claim it, and he got it! Okay, so what do we need? Two threes. That's it. We just need, if we, if we get two threes, we will likely win. All right, those are that's some solid sixes though. Those are some solid sixes. I would like to see no more, please. I would like. Okay, that's a good. Good roll. No sixes. One six. Okay, so I mean, give him the thirty-five. Give him the thirty-five points. Literally, if we hit the bonus, we win. So it's still two sixes or two threes. Two threes. There's one. Please. One three on four dice. Of, of course. You knew it, they wouldn't make it that easy. I don't believe it. I, I honestly don't believe it. We needed one three on eight dice. We got none. Congratulations, Nathan. It was it was a well played game. Misclick cost you the game. 
probably did, honestly. But on it, like, I'm not that upset about the misclick because it was actually Nintendo's fault. <laughs> I'm not saying it was, I couldn't have influenced it, but it was literally like, press a button, wait a second, press it again, and then it was like, tick, tick. So I, I, I throw that one at the altar of Nintendo. Um, let's see, we probably got like one more game left in here. What are people playing? People are playing Uno, darts, and random. I mean, I'll, I'll play random against somebody, but I, I'm telling you, if I end up matching with uh, with somebody in blackjack, that's the end of that's the end of my existence. Okay, toy baseball. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, no matter what, toy baseball was going to be the end, whether it was the first game we played or the last one. So let's do it. Okay, I'm pitching first. So what do you, what do you do when you're pitching first? We don't give him a brain destroyer. We just pitch to him normally first. And we, we sandbag. We pretend to be normal to begin with. Ow. And then inning two. We, we go up one in inning one. And then in inning two, we start hitting him with the brain melter. Oh, tough luck. Give him a little slow beat. This isn't even the brain melter yet. Oh, tough luck. Oh, that's gonna... And then never throw a ball. You just never throw a ball to begin with. You just only throw strikes. Okay. So we... Nine, nine pitches, nine strikes. Here we go. Now we get ready and he, you treat us with respect because we treated you with respect. This does not appear respectful. Buddy, you know, some of us have to get back to our distance learning classes. Great pitch, great pitch, okay? Great pitch, I was a little slow on that one. A little slow on that one, just getting just getting adjusted. Jad you stay. Great pitch, great pitch. Blue right by me. Okay, give me another one. Give me another one here. I mean, you're showing me a great deal of disrespect with the way that you're playing right now. Taking as, as much time as you're taking per pitch, so get ready. Like, you don't even know the brain melting is coming. The brain melting is coming. Oh, that one would have gone, too. The reaction time. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, honestly, like, first off, it comes in so fast. It's almost impossible to react to it to begin with. And then secondarily, the 0 0.25 second delay from when you press the button to when the switch actually gets the signal doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> like, it's a little crazy. Yeah, the game is just a little, a little busted as is. This is, this is by design. Like, this is just, this is just BM. Yep, okay, so if you want a BM. That was great, you got me. What you don't know is that you're about, you're going up against the BM master. Okay, so you, are you ready for this? Okay, good, good one, you almost had it there. Oh, almost had me. Oh, can't be swinging at that. <laughs> that was a gutter ball. That one was behind you, buddy. You're gonna get sciatica. Then you give him one of these. Just give him a fastball real quick. Right down the center. And then, when he gets used to that, you you bait him. That, that was not supposed to release, just for the record. Then you send it behind him again. Ooh, can't be swinging at that, buddy. <laughs> Almost clipped you in the heel. Then you give him a, you give him a fastball. And then you change it up. Oh, almost had it. That's a quick one. That's a tough one to get. And then, of course, you already knew it was going to be behind you. Why would you swing? Every single time. On strike three, I'm going to throw it behind you. So 
So we just got to be as toxic as he's being. There you go. We made contact. Uh-oh. What's this? Did that go into a hole? Did I just did I just get on base? <laughs> did I just get on base? I knew you were coming in hot. I don't know what your name is. I'm going to call you Tommy. You're lucky. I got a little greedy on that one. I'm not denying that. Not denying that one. Protect the plate. We're protecting the plate. Great pitching. Great pitching. You're playing some mind games? Just get some content. Make contact. Get some wood on the ball. Get some wood on the pigskin. He's going fast this time. He's going slow. Should have had that one. Should have had that one. He's going fast. He's going to try to break me down. Make contact. Keep it going. Keep it going. He's going fast this time. Boomer reaction time. You got me. You got me. That's two outs. Okay, we got one more. Make contact. Make contact. We're not trying to strand this runner, okay? Ow. Son of a... <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, this one is just like a gimme. Come on, dude. Like, what are you shooting at? What are you swinging at? What are you swinging at? I'm just gonna throw balls. I'm gonna throw this. I'm gonna throw the same pitch every time. Then he's gonna be like, he wouldn't do it again. Guess what? I'm gonna do it again. And then he's like, he's gonna do it again. And that's when you blow him away. And then he's like, he's gonna do it again. That's when you blow him away. Okay. So there's two outs. And then you go back to Old Faithful. Oh! And then he's like, you're never gonna do it again. So we do it again. And then he's forgotten that the ball can curve the other way. So we're gonna give him a little trick. And then we're gonna go back to Old Faithful. All right, worst case scenario, we're getting the tie. <laughs> It's so good. I'm not saying we're doing much better, but... A lot of fouls. They gotta adjust the... They gotta adjust the timing window on this game, man. Like, it's impossible to hit. It's a pitcher's game. You got me. You got me. Another foul ball. It'll be a foul ball. Another foul. That'll be a strikeout. You got me. You got me. Dude, what the heck? Randy Johnson over. Oh, let's go. It's a single. <laughs> Oh, you... Dude, that's a win. We got on base more than him. That's a win. I'm, I'm treating that as a dub. No other players joined, huh? All right, well, for now, I'm going to hit you with a slash mark.